The House of Representatives Caucus of the People's Democratic Party rose from a meeting on Tuesday this week condemning what it calls the federal government of Nigeria's continuing harassment of the promoters of the hashtag NSARS movement. The caucus said that everything is wrong with the government preferring to pursue this punitive course of action at the same time that judicial panels of inquiry set up to find out the truth are still trying to settle down and do the job. A statement signed by the chairman of the PDP House Caucus, Honorable Kingsley Chinda, PDP River State, described this development as an indicator that all is not well with the Federation, as well as the constitution upon which it is operated. We're now joined by Honorable Sergius Ogun, who represents Essan Northeast and Essan Southeast Federal Constituency in Edo State. How can the PDP National Assembly Caucus intervene to reduce the likelihood of this classic example of misuse of executive powers. How much of an issue has the entire NSARS matter been on the floor of the House? Can constitutional amendments provide all the answers? What about bipartisan collaboration? To what extent are the lawmakers engaging their constituents regarding the germane issues thrown up by the protests? Well, so many questions there uh, from uh, Tundo. Uh, but Quickly, when the PDP caucus in the House of Reps uh, begins to criticize the federal government and appears to be supporting the hashtag NSAS uh, promoters, does that not, could that not be interpreted by the government of the day that, yes, we had said it, that the PDP uh, was supporting the protest and was inciting uh, the protesters against uh, the government? Hello, Honorable Sergius. Hello. Can you, did you hear me? Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't hear the tape part of it, but it's okay. I, I think I get what you're trying to say. Oh, well, good morning. And good thank morning. you for having thank me you. today. Yes. We, yeah. Well, we, the PDP is in opposition and is our our position to criticize the government when they don't do well, and when they do well, we we'll support them. So in the case of NSAS protests, maybe we should take a poll and see how Nigerians think or thought about it. To a large extent, what the young people were asking for is good governance. Are we saying Nigerians are not yearning for good governance today? So if PDP is supporting good governance, that's a good thing to support. They have become a credible opposition and ready to take over government in 2023. If the government at the center do not like it, we're too bad. So I think we should do more of this. But what I have also realized in the narrative lately is that hoodlums in some states maybe were sponsored by the government there. We saw part of what happened in Abuja. The ANSAS protests, as we have come to know it, was peaceful and by young people, very enlightened people who conducted themselves very well. I think it's the failure of intelligence that led to what happened in other states when hoodlums took over. Because we are here, you saw policemen even working with the young people. When they move out, you see policemen with them. I mean, I encountered them not too far away from here, but the secretary, the federal secretary, on a particular Sunday, I was coming from church, and I had a meeting in uh, Metama. I saw the young men moving up with security men with them, and they offered me cold water, and I said I didn't need anyone. You know? So the point that I'm making is they were, to a large extent, very, very peaceful. So it's what happened thereafter when hoodlums took over. And what we should be questioning is the intels. The young people didn't say the police should leave the road. Like I said, the police were working with them. What happened to the intelligence? that led to the police not realizing that hoodlums are likely to hijack it. Because we knew where these protesters were. Yeah, in Abuja, we knew where they were. Wherever they were going to come at, they send a message. We are going to be in AY, whatever. We are going to be in um, CBN, you know? So the point I'm making is, clearly, they were peaceful. Whatever happened thereafter is the responsibility of maybe the government. If the policemen were out there doing their work, none of that would have happened. So when they generalize this is to say hoodlums took over and they destroy so many things, it's failure of intelligence. And who should be held responsible for that? 
Well, who indeed? We do operate a system of checks and balances, or we're supposed to, according to our constitution. So if you feel that there's been some executive high-handedness, what exactly is the House of Representatives going to do to restore balance to the equation? There was a motion on the floor of the House before we went on, uh, before we adjourned for budget defense. And I think there's a... There's an ad hoc committee set up and it's been headed, been chaired by, I think, even the deputy speaker of the House. So that's how serious we are taking this matter in the National Assembly. And, well, like you know, there are inquiries set up here and there by the state government. Maybe one will be careful not to be judgmental here. But, well, let's see what comes out from it. But on our own part in the National Assembly, we will extract all the facts and then uh, we will come out with something. But the challenge again, like, People said, the, the, the youths had a request, they had five requests, and the government agreed to all of them. But do you doubt the fact that, or do you, are you concerned that the youth do not trust the government anymore? And like they said clearly, the young people said clearly, there have been a series of reports in the past, and nothing was ever done. So if you say well, you agree to all our demands right now, what's going to happen to them? We just go home and sleep, and then that will be another thing. And even what is happening now, that's why, you know, the caucus, the PDP caucus is condemning what is happening. You have told the young people, leave the streets. We have heard everything you said, and we will concur. We will do X, Y, Z. And then the next thing, you are arresting them. You are freezing their account. Who does that? We, the, question is when are, is the question is not when are they going to come out again, or rather, if they will come out again. It's when are they going to come out again. And maybe we should avert our mind to what happened in Romania in 1989. Within nine days, that government was brought down. If today 500 people begin to march to the Astro Rock Villa, 500 young people, who do you think can stop them? So I think the, this government should, should up their game. Right. Uh, I, I'd like to know your reaction to what happened in your own state, Edo State. It was a free-for-all. A lot of food homes were let out, and we know what is happening now in the states not palatable. Bodies everywhere, police officers being killed, free for all, courtist group here and there, killings, killings, killings in your state. How do you feel about that as a result of all of this that has happened? Yeah, I feel very bad I, and I sympathize with, uh, with my governor and everyone that's been affected in the state. I mean, I was in the constituency the weekend before last. I was in the constituency last weekend and um, I'll be back to the constituency maybe next weekend. So I, I, I know what is happening there, and it's not, it's not something we like. I mean, Edo State is a very peaceful state. We are, we, are, we are loving people. Again, you see, there are so many things we have to talk about. When you talk about answers, it embodies a whole lot of things. Now, the prison on, on, Sap on Sapler Road in Benin, that uh, the inmates were let out, that prison is not far from the police headquarters, where you have the commissioner of police. It's less than three minutes drive, less than three minutes. The wardens are supposed to have guns. I know this because I, deal a lot, I, deal, I have a lot of dealings with prisons. End of year, I go to the prisons, I cook for inmates, because some years ago I was in Lagos, I was part of the prison and hospital ministry for my church. So for me, before I even got elected, I sank a ball hole in the prison in my constituency in Obiaja. And I go there every end of year to do things for them, you know, share Bibles and all stuff. So the point I'm making here is there are wardens that have guns. If there was sporadic shooting, I'm sure the police would have heard. Are you saying that the prison governor or deputy governor could not have called the police station there? I mean, I'm talking about the headquarters where the, the, the commissioner of police is. Less than three minutes drive. And then when the governor went there, we saw that they showed us a part of the wall that was broken. But we saw inmates on camera climbing and jumping out. Then at the point, the gate was opened. So the point I'm making is I think there was a conspiracy, but I will not be quick to, to, to arrive at anything right now since there's um, an inquiry going on. So it just doesn't end with that protest. Something happened that we should probe into. The policemen are not happy with their take home today. Neither are the wardens, the prison wardens, happy. No, you talk about even the army 
of users, you know. But it's not a problem that was caused by this administration, I must be fair, and I do not think they have the capacity to resolve it. I have always said we should strengthen our institutions. That has the foundation. If we strengthen our institution, we claim we have about 300,000 policemen in this country. Have we looked at how they are recruited? If you look at that, maybe you discover 300 policemen might not be enough, but if they are trained and given the right gadget to work, they will do far better than they are doing now. But in a situation you recruit, when was the last time any of us engaged some of these policemen? Like I said, yeah, they might not be happy that they are not well paid, but are they well trained? What's the budget for training? How were they recruited? Do we have the best of our best in the force? So these are some of the things we should look at. We are not happening. We are not happy what's happening in the do state today, and it's very unfortunate. But the governor is doing his best. Well, I'd like to ask you, because uh, a few minutes ago you referred to Romania, and you were saying that it's a matter of time before we could have another round of uh, protests. You recall that northern governors and also traditional rulers from the north, uh, they came up with the uh, conclusion that the NSAS protest was actually about regime change and that it was an attempt to force a regime change uh, through the back door. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, well, it's very unfortunate that, um, that they would think like that, but that's no news to me because I have colleagues in the House who are from the North. It was the same sentiment they were expressing. And if, I was surprised you know, that anybody would, would talk like that, but it's very unfortunate. It's very unfortunate that people will still think like that today. And again, if you, if you, if you look at some of the reasons they are used, it clearly, clearly explains why we should not have a unitary system of government, why we pretend to have a federal uh, system of government. Everything is wrong with the system today. And why is that most people are talking about restructuring? And again, when you talk about restructuring, is it indeed not that we are first to say you cannot force us, you cannot blackmail us with restructuring? It's only the blind that will sit down today and tell you that things are working well in this country. If we restructure this country, and like I keep saying, well, most Nigerians would like to use high sounding words. My own thinking, like, okay, now in 2018, the APC came out with their own uh, 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 constitutional review and said that they were in support of uh, true federalism. Then 2019 was the election. They didn't do anything before the elections. And now this is 2020. In another two years, we'll be preparing for another election. So what have they done about the true federalism? So uh, now we have the constitutional review committee. I'm a member of that committee. These are things we are going to be looking at. States should be able to make independent decisions. States should be able to generate resources to take care of their needs. We have copied this system from the US. But why are we not utilizing it they're doing in the US? Like today now, you hear about the spike in coronavirus in the US. Is the lame duck president doing anything about it? The responsibility of the state governors. So either say there is a mandate on wearing of a uh, mask, or they are going to lock down. If you went to easy lockdown, it's the responsibility of the state governors. But here, when everybody's going cap in hand to the president, that's why people will be bothered about what happens to the president. If in a situation we are operating through federalism and the states are in competition with one another and we are doing our things, I don't think some of these things will be happening. You have less power in the center. And that is what I will urge us to do in this country because this system is not working. That is why you will see some people in a certain part of the country would say, because they have that person there, whatever is happening is a regime change. It's very, it's very unfortunate. Well, thank you very much, Honorable uh, Sergio Ozogun, for joining us on The Morning Show. Thank you very much indeed.